fugue that accompanies that is also, I think, a troubling piece. Um, this piece is the most maybe um, subdued uh, of all the of all the fugues in the work. The ranges of the voices are very contained. Um, the the ways in which the subjects come are somewhat almost mysterious. Um, and it seems to me that the, the main crux of this fugue is these little sequences. So I need to explain a little bit what I'm talking about. One thing that I should begin with, uh, in all cases, is the subject. And this is a very amazing kind of subject. And then it starts out sort of ordinary, but then in the orange measure has a skip. <laughs> Bach has written this little staccato marker, this little wedgie over it, which is, I, I, I'm not sure what to make of that, because it's not, in a lot of fugues, he puts like an eighth note, eighth rest to, to show you an articulation. Um, but here he uses a staccato marker to show the articulation, and uh, I suppose it just means on an organ or a harpsichord, you couldn't accent that note dynamically, so it's just, it has a certain kind of shortness, and I think just writing it that way, instead of writing eighth note, eighth rest, Bach was implying there's a certain kind of uh, pathos to that note that is different from just any other kind of separated note. That moment of sort of what's going to happen next. And um, you'll notice this, this red thing. using this red to mean any rhythm that goes da 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 sometimes it's not the same um, pattern of notes but it seems to have the same function and it seems to infiltrate the whole piece almost as the predominant idea this little orange idea is certainly remarkable but maybe because of that Bach doesn't use it too much just occasionally um, and you'll see lots of times where the subject sort of starts and doesn't really finish. It's kind of disconnected from the orange material. And you'll also um, see the upside down version of the subject. For example, here is upside down green. But it doesn't lead to orange, so that's not really all there. Um, here's one that actually does go all the way. One very specifically interesting thing about the way Bach uses repetition in this piece, and that's that um, this material, which I've marked in sort of a light orange, and this material is exactly the same, transposed. It's almost like it's uh, the way in Sonata Allegro form you might find the end of your exposition showing up at the end of your recapitulation, um, transposed from the key of the dominant, the child key to the parent key. So this is uh, the big cadence in A minor that ends the first section, and that is uh, identified by the subject in stretto. <laughs> separate 
this fugue from other pieces. And that's its sort of um, obsession with a, a certain kind of sequence, a sequence in which um, all of the lines are moved um, in a particular succession to really build the um, dramatic quality of the piece. They're not so much there for a modulation, which is usually what sequences are about. They're there, I think, to give you the sense of uh, almost pushing towards a certain goal. So there's uh, four of these places I'm going to play for you. Here's the first one. And you can see it's all built around different aspects of the thematic material. That one is, is a descending one. This one um, is going up. Prelude is really more fugue than almost any of the fugues in the book. <laughs> 